Okay, I don't have to wait as long for this phone to load. It's much faster. Um, okay, so this one is going to be about... Um, it's related to the topic of like DM inspiration, specifically in 5e, uh, and how you're kind of supposed to hand it out. Like, in normal... In the, the DMJ suggests that... Uh, or it goes over DM inspiration... It explains that it's completely up to the DM when they can hand it out. They suggest that you hand it out for particularly good role play, which is subjective, or when a character role plays their ideals, bonds, or flaws. Is the fourth one? What's the fourth one? Is personality traits? Uh, yeah, when they really when they role play their ideal bonds or flaws effectively. Um, particularly in cases where it would go against, or at least this, I don't know if it actually says this, but this is the spirit I see it as, that even if it goes against uh, like the player's best interest. Um, and for an example, in one of the games I'm playing in, my character Raskus, who's a very honor-bound, very off a good type. He, uh, him and his party took, undertook a job to capture this, uh, this criminal, uh, drug maker, capture him alive and bring him back to one of the most powerful, uh, noble merchants in the city. Raskus didn't feel super great about this, but it was a big reward and the rest of the party wanted to do it. And also, Raskris is trying to get played on. So, that's it. Um, so, did that, and then some other stuff happened that revealed that this particular criminal was even worse than we thought. So, Raskris, Raskris felt a little bit better about it, but not much. And then at the end, at, when we delivered this guy, um, Raskers informed this noble that he never wishes to do business again with you. Um, you know, I, I never want to do a business with an individualist so honorless as yourself that you would uh, order a bounty for a man to be captured so that you could torture him to death. Not a, not a pro gamer move. I'm gonna tell you, because uh, ooh, traffic's backing up. Um, because as a result, the uh, now Raskris is. I mean, when I said that, I could see it on the DM's face, like, oh no, oh no. Uh, so now Raskris is barred from ever doing business at any establishment that this merchant owns directly or indirectly. And he had previously commissioned a set of plate armor. Guess from who? A, or a, a very skilled blacksmith that is affiliated with this noble's uh, overarching brand. So he was banned from uh, purchasing that blade armor, but the order just went out that day. I arrived, and this particular NPC, thanks to a good roll on the NPC's part, um, kind of took pity on Raskris and sold him the armor anyway, and told him, I'll deal with Ravish, I'll deal with the noble, um, because this NPC ends up respecting Raskris to a degree here. And this is the type of situation where Raskris should probably pay for his ideals in a certain way. But instead of... It's also a situation where DM inspiration could have been handed out because I roleplayed my character's ideals in a way that hurts the player and hurts the character, but it's true to the character. So... As a result, more or less, instead of getting inspiration, I got a chance to get that armor anyway. And I was still, the character's still paying for it, I still have to pony up the money. But, 
you know. Uh, yeah, so instead of inspiration, I got the chance to still get that armor anyway. And I think that's a reasonable kind of reward, too. Like, if you roleplay your character effectively, things work out a little bit. Like, you get a little lucky down the line. And you can always effectively do that through the use of an inspiration. Like, just make a roll really good. But, you know, situations like that, I think, are... Are, are what you want to what you want to look out for where you can do those types of things where a character can or a player can really role play their character in a way that's true to the character and isn't perfectly in line with winning the game well you might I don't want to use the term take it easy in other cases but uh, fortune favors them that kind of thing and that's definitely, that's just something that I think is, is a pro gamer move. Um, I guess, is there any other things like related to this kind of topic? Yeah, um, I guess I'll touch on DM inspiration in general. I feel like a lot of DMs don't, kind of don't hand it out very much. Like, basically... You know, a lot of a lot of DMs kind of live for the role play of their players and their reactions and stuff of their players, but they just kind of they're like so busy and they're so wrapped up in running the game, they just kind of forget about the inspiration mechanic, and uh, and that's a shame because it's useful. It's a reward for the players that isn't something that like isn't like oh yeah uh, I like what you did so here's some extra experience or here's a cool item. Like, no, it's just, this is an easy thing that you can just hand out. Like, when I was um, in the last Site 27 um, mission, when I was running, uh, two of the players had this really funny interaction that I can't really remember exactly, because one of the characters is a Horizon Walker Ranger, so he's access to Misty Step, but he's a character from the Horizon Initiative, which, if you're not familiar with SCP stuff, which I've explained all this in previous videos, but, um, more or less, what do you call it? Uh, that's an organization that's based around all the members are, you know, all the personnel in the organization are members of one of the three Abrahamic faiths. This particular character is a Catholic, so his misty step has a bunch of, like, little cross sparkles. Like, just, you know, there's got to be a visual effect for the teleport. So, for him, it's a bunch of crosses. Just, you know, just, it was like a minor flavor thing at first, and then he teleports over to the other character who is a bard, but uses, um, the, their art is posting on Instagram. <laughs> it's a whole thing. But, so then they had this quick interchange about, uh, like, selfie filters. <laughs> so I had to hand both of them DM inspiration. And then there was a third character, the uh, Foundation Medic was right there also. And he kind of chimed in, that character chimed in, but the player didn't come up with, like, as great a joke or, like, as great of a quip. And that's not to disparage that player. Like, you know, you can't always be funny. Um, it's just those other two characters have such a perfect interchange. It was so difficult to follow it up. And the player did it anyway, which I definitely respect. Like, let me try to get in on this. But it didn't, it didn't hit. And so I decided not to give that third player the inspiration. And maybe I felt bad about that. Maybe I felt like I was, like like, you know, singling that player out, like, no, you didn't do as good humor, so you don't get this, which I hope the player didn't feel that way, I didn't ask them about it, about it, and it was just a passing moment, but, you know, that's the type of stuff you run into, and, uh, like, sometimes one player will always be making these, these funny comments, and, like, good quips and statements and stuff, 
and they'll be getting DM inspiration frequently. And another player just kind of doesn't. And at the core, uh, something like DM inspiration is supposed to be like sprinkled on top. It's extra. It's not necessary to use. But I guess if you use it in the wrong way, like if uh, some, some players can feel left out of it, and that's something to keep an eye out for, I guess. I guess that's all I'm really saying with this little segment. Um, I have seen other house rules where some people do, instead of uh, the way inspiration normally works, where you can spend the inspiration and get in, and get uh, advantage on whatever you're currently doing. I've seen people kind of co-opt the bardic inspiration. So it's like, okay, you get a D10 to add to whatever. Um, that probably feels a little bit better and is a bit more game mechanic-y in some ways. It's not as, like, swingy, potentially swingy as advantage, but also, um, you don't want to use that if the, uh, you might not want to use that if you already have a bard in your party, you know? Because, well, you're stepping on that bard's toes by using their main, one of their main features, and there's some argument there, but there's lots of different ways to home, home, home rule it. Like uh, another game, the Curse of Strahd game I'm in, that DM inspiration works by, instead of getting advantage, you can just force a roll to be a natural 20. So that's much stronger. But um, otherwise, pretty similar. Um, yeah, it's just, there's a lot of different ways um, you can kind of like not use... DM inspiration directly, but just kind of that concept. Like, reward players for really good in-character RP, even if it hurts them. Like, you know, you don't want the, the dreaded it's what my character would do, but that's kind of the idea. Like, you know, this isn't a great move in this situation, but it is what my character would do. As long as something like that isn't, like, fatal to the situation, that's alright. Um, yeah, this one was, this one was all over the place, but, uh, yeah.